All right, today we're going to talk about uh, colligative properties and what's called net ionic equations. All right, you're going to want to get your solubility rules out and possibly a periodic table. All right, the first section is colligative properties, and that's just simply going to be explaining a couple of terms in a couple of situations. Now, what a colligative property is, is a property that depends on the concentration of solute particles. So in other words, how much stuff is dissolved. And there are two that you're responsible for that their names are pretty self-explanatory, but what's called boiling point elevation and freezing point depression. Okay, and that's going to be the two properties. Now freezing point depression, a non-volatile solute, um, non-volatile is a fancy way for meaning that it will actually dissolve in something. Okay, so it just means that it will actually, that it will dissolve, and that it will depress the freezing point of the solvent. Okay, um, the amount of this depression depends on the concentration of the solute or the amount. So if you have more stuff, then you're going to be able to low the, lower the freezing point that much more. Um, for example, when we add salt to the roads at the winter time, what we're trying to do is by adding the salt into the water, we are actually lowering the freezing point. So in essence, if we lower the freezing point below what the temperature is outside, we can cause it to melt. Um, same thing's going to happen when we make ice cream. The reason you add salt to the ice is it lowers the temperature of the ice um, so that you can use that to your advantage to make ice cream because it will lower, um, once ice is frozen, it it will stay at that temperature and if you can add the salt in it will actually lower that freezing point and make it colder. Here we're using it to melt it, here we're using it to cook. So there's a couple of different scenarios there. Now boiling point elevation is going to be the opposite. A non-volatile solute will elevate the boiling point of the solvent. And again the amount of the elevation will depend on the concentration. And for example if you add salt to boiling water it will actually raise the temperature of the solution slightly and the cook will, the food will actually cook just a little bit faster. Not a ton but our normal boiling point of water is 100 degrees Celsius so a lot of times you can raise it oh I don't know maybe 102. The more you add the higher you can get. Okay so you can you will increase the boiling point of that situation. And that's really all you have to know with colligative properties. Know the definitions, be able to understand some examples. Now for the next part we're going to review a little bit. Um, we've got some balanced chemical reactions and we want to write chemical reactions for the following double replacement reactions. Alright, if I have a solution of strontium chloride, it's going to be SrCl2 and it's aqueous. I'm going to add it to potassium sulfate, okay, which is K2SO4, which is a solution. Okay, now in order to predict the products, I have to flip-flop the negative and the positively charged thing. So I'm going to go ahead and start with the strontium and the sulfate. Strontium is a 2 plus, sulfate is a 2 minus, so it's going to be SrSO4, and then I'm also going to get potassium chloride. There are what's a 1 plus and a 1 minus, so it's going to be KCl. Now in order first I got to get a balance. I got to put a 2 in front of the potassium chloride and then I got to figure out states. And where I figure out states is if things are soluble or insoluble. Now if you find potassium chloride on your solubility rules, you'll find that it's soluble. Well, if it's soluble, it gets an aqueous. Okay? Now strontium sulfate is going to be insoluble. Well, if something is insoluble, it's going to be a solid precipitate. So we have to identify that as a solid. Okay. <clears throat> now the next one that we have is a solution of sodium sulfide and iron 2 nitrate. Um, sodium sulfide is Na2S and it's a solution. We're adding it to iron 2 nitrate which is FeNO32. It's also a solution. Now when you flip flop them, first you're going to have a sodium. It doesn't really matter which one but remember we're crisscross, we're just Recrisscrossing. Sodium is a 1 plus, nitrate's a 1 minus, so it's NaNO3, nothing new. Sodium nitrate is soluble, so it's going to be aqueous. And then I'm going to have iron 2 sulfide. Iron is a 2 plus, sulfide is a 2 minus, so it's going to be FeS. And if you find this on the solubility, you're going to figure out that it's insoluble. So if it's insoluble, it's going to be a solid. The only new piece we're adding in here is predicting the products, or sorry, predicting the states of these products. We've done double replacements, we've done predicting um, products, now we just have to add in the um, states. Now if we have aluminum chloride, it's going to be AlCl3, and it's a solution. We're adding that to silver nitrate, AgNO3, 
which is a solution. Now first off, if I crisscross them, I get the aluminum nitrate. Aluminum's a 3 plus, nitrate's a 1 minus, so it's going to be Al NO33. Nitrates are always soluble, so it's aqueous. I add that to um, then silver chloride, which is AgCl, because silver is a 1 plus, chloride's a 1 minus, and it's insoluble, so it's a solid. Okay, so that's the new piece of writing these reactions. Okay, now, there are three types of equations. You should be, this should say equations on your slide. I'm pretty sure I crossed it off. First one is the moleculars. This is the overall reaction. It's the normal type we've been writing. Okay, so this is what we've been doing all along. Now, complete ionic is all strong electrolytes are broken into ions. So you're going to all remember all strong electrolytes are going to be our soluble salts, oops, as well as our strong acids and strong bases. Okay. Now, net ionic equation, we cancel out what are called the spectators. Spectators are things that are exactly the same on both sides. They don't participate, and it only includes the species that participate in the chemical reaction. All right. Now, for types of electrolytes, remember the strong must be aqueous. They're soluble. Strong acids, there are six of them. You have to memorize these. Okay, hydrochloric, hydrobromic, hydriotic, nitric, perchloric, and sulfuric. Those are the strong acids. What will not break apart, weak or non-electrolytes, any molecular compounds, um, with the exception of strong acids, any gases, solids, or liquids, we also do not split. And any weak acids, compounds with hydrogen in front other than these listed over here. Okay, so these are things we do not split on this side. Okay, so how do we write net ionic equations? All right, here is our the reaction we just had. We had strontium chloride plus potassium sulfate gives us strontium sulfate and potassium chloride. There's our balanced molecular reaction. Okay, so this is the molecular version. Everything is still together. Now, the complete ionic, we're going to go ahead and we're going to split everything that is aqueous. Okay, so we're going to end up with strontium 2 plus which is aqueous, two chlorides, okay, remember that two here is means the fact that we have two chlorides, plus two potassiums, aqueous, plus a sulfate, which is aqueous. Now, we do not split the solid. So we have SrSO4, which is a solid. We do split two potassiums, two chlorides. Oops and those are both aqueous. Okay, now we get rid of the spectators. The spectators are things that are exactly the same on both sides. So our spectators are the chlorine, you know, the chloride rather, and the potassium. They have to be exactly the same and we cro end up crossing those off from because they cancel out. It's like algebra. They're exactly the same. So the chloride ion and the potassium ion. So that our net ionic reaction is anything that's left. It's the strontium which is aqueous plus the sulfate, which is aqueous, which gives us the strontium sulfate solid. So this is the chemistry that takes place, and we got rid of all of the spec whoops, spectators that don't participate in the chemical reaction. Okay, now let's do the other ones that we did together. We've got solutions of sodium sulfide and iron 2 nitrate are mixed. We already wrote our molecular balanced chemical equation. Okay, S because it's insoluble, aqueous because it's still floating around. Now for complete ionics, for this one, we would have two sodiums plus a sulfide. Okay, so both of those are aqueous. We're going to have an iron 2, which is aqueous. We're going to have two nitrates, which is aqueous. We're going to have two sodiums, which are aqueous. We're going to have two nitrates, which are aqueous, and we're going to have iron sulfide, which is a solid. Now our spectators, again, they have to be exactly the same in terms of charge and state. So we've got nitrate and sodium ion. Okay, so you've got Na plus and nitrate. Now it doesn't matter. You can put the coefficient. You don't have to. The important thing is that you have the formula and the state. So my net ionic reaction, whoops, is going to be what's left. The sulfide, which was aqueous when we reacted it, plus the iron 2, which was aqueous, and we're going to react it to get iron 2 
sulfide solid. And this is my net ionic reaction. Okay, my net ionic reaction. Um, and if you think about it from a chemistry perspective, what that would look like is that if once I combine those into the beaker or the well, all that means is that once, so say I took my solution of sodium sulfide and my solutions of iron nitrate, well what you would get is you still would have sodium ions floating around and you still would have nitrate ions floating around. They're still in there. But what happens is as soon as you dump the iron twos and the sulfides, they pair up together and they form that, would be that kind of that solid on the bottom. Okay, so this is what it would look like, whereas since these guys are the spectators, they're not participating in the reaction. All right, we're going to do one more together. This is our aluminum chloride and silver nitrate. Here's the balanced chemical reaction that we wrote earlier. Ooh, I'm fairly certain I forgot the three on the sodium chloride and the three in front of the silver nitrate when we wrote that a few slides ago. Um, so you're going to want to make sure that you jot that down because it wasn't balanced. So here's my balanced molecular equation. My complete ionic, I'm going to split these up. So aluminum is a 3 plus, plus 3 chlorides. So aqueous, aqueous, plus 3 silvers. Oops. Aqueous, plus 3 nitrates, which is aqueous. We're going to have... Um, the solids we do not split, so three silver chlorides, which are solid, and then we're going to have aluminum, which is aqueous, and three nitrates, which is aqueous. All right, so when we're looking at our spectators, again, it's what's exactly the same. So we've got the aluminum is going to get canceled out, and the nitrates are going to be canceled out. So my spectator ions are the aluminum and the nitrate. So then my net ionic is simply going to be three chlorides. And then it doesn't matter what order, so long as they're the right chemistry there. Three silvers, which are aqueous, and we're going to get three silver chlorides. Now this would get you full credit. The only thing you might notice is that all of these are exactly the same number. So we could cross those off and do the threes, and then we'll be in good shape. Okay? Now there is one more here. <coughs> and solutions of calcium phosphate and sulfuric acid. We're going to do this one together in class so that I can talk through it um, before we do some of the samples. So I hope that helps. Uh, make sure you've got your solubility rules and your ion sheets and we'll get through